Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to Deb Chanel's 40s World where we talk about the Bible. We read the Bible, we dialogue, and we discuss. Okay, this is my second time recording this. Don't know what happened to the first one, but I hit a wrong button and everything that I recorded basically went away. So bear with me. I'm taping at 2.01 a.m. in the morning. So hopefully this second time will go off without a hitch and we will get it posted for all the people that come to my channel looking forward to reading the Bible with me. Okay, we're in Genesis chapter 20. We're going to go through Genesis 20 through 23. Okay, let's get right on into it. And sometimes in between, in between reading scripture, I kind of give my opinion or my perspective when I see fit. Okay. When I go off like on a side note, and I don't say this is a side note, it's not in the Bible, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, but let's go on and get into this Abraham and Ivan Leach or Aben Leach or Amber Leach. Okay, it's spelled A B I M E L E C H. If I am mispronouncing it or any other words, please forgive me. Okay. Uh, now Abraham moved on from there. Into the region of Negev and lived before Kadesh and Shur. For a while he stayed in Gigar, and there Abraham said of his wife Sarah, She is my sister. Then Ambalich, a king of Gigar, or Gergar, sent for Sarah and took her. But God came to Ambalich in a dream one night and said to him, You are as good as dead because of the woman you have taken. She is a married woman. Now Ambalich had not gone near her. So he said, Lord, will you destroy an innocent nation? Did he not say to me, she is my sister? And didn't she also say he is my brother? I have done nothing. I have done this with a clear conscience and clean hands. Okay. Then God said to him in the dream, yes, I know you did this with a clear conscience. from sinning against me. That is why I did not let you touch her. Now return. The man's wife, for he is a prophet, and he will pray for you, and you will live. But if you do not return her, you may be sure that you and yours will die. Early the next morning, Ambalich summoned all his officials, and when he told them all that had happened, they were very much afraid. Then Ambalich called Abraham in and said, What have you done to us? Have how have I wronged you that you have brought such a great guilt upon me and my kingdom? You have done things to me that should not be done. And Ambalish asked Abraham, Why was your reason what was your reason for doing this? Abraham replied, I said to myself, This is surely no fear. This is surely no fear of God in this place. And they will kill me because of my wife. Besides, she really is my sister, the daughter of my father though not my mother and she became my wife and when God had me wander from father's household I said to her this is how you can show me or show your love to me everywhere we go say of me he is my brother then Amalich brought sheep and cattle and male and female slaves and gave them to Abraham and he returned Sarah his wife to him and Amalich said my land is before you live wherever you like to Sarah, he said, I am giving your brother a thousand shekels of silver. This is to cover the offense against you because all who are with you, you are completely vindicated. Then Abraham prayed to God and God healed Amalek, his wife, and his slave girls so they could have children again. For the Lord had closed up every wound in Amalek's household because of Abraham's wife, Sarah. All right, so that was a good thing that he did what the Lord told him to do without haste because he was going to be a king without a kingdom because there were going to be no repro, well, what do you call it, procreating, uh, any new procreating because all the women had been like, um, I guess uh, we call it, um, it's barren, but they didn't have the, um, instruments i would say the body organs and stuff wasn't functioning well enough to be able to hold a child in its place in the womb so he had sold all that up when then coming out of there 
if Emma Lynch didn't release Sarah and let them go on their merry way. Okay, that's my perspective of it. Though it did get kind of dicey there when I was reading, and I was like, well, what in the world? Okay, well, he really didn't lie, because they're not counting them to be blood relatives in a sense, because the mother was like the hold of the glue. I guess the father can have, you know, many, many wives and many, many descendants, but it has to come from the same mother, if you want to call it an infraction of uh, incest or something like that. So, okay, I kind of got that. So we move on to chapter 21, the birth of Isaac. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, and he had said, as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age. At the very time God had promised him, Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him. As God commanded him, Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. And she added, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would have nursed children? Yet I have bore him a son in his old age. Okay. Hagar and Ishmael sent away. The child grew and was winged. And on the day Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a great feast. But Sarah saw that the son who Hagar, the Egyptian, had born to Abraham was mocking. And he and she said to Abraham, get rid of that slave woman and her son. For that slave woman's son would never share in the inheritance with my son. The matter distressed Abraham. Greatly so, because it was both of his sons. He was the father of both of those. Mothers were different, but the fathers were the same. The matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son. But God said to him, do not be so distressed about the boy and your married servant. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you, because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. I will make the son of the maid servant into a nation also, because he is your offspring. Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on the, he set them on her shoulders and then sent off sent her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Beersheba. When the water and the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went off and sat down nearby, about a bow shot away from. Or both shot away for she thought I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there nearby, she began to sob. God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy as he grew up. He lived in the desert and became an archer. While he was living in the desert of Paran, his mother got a wife for him from Egypt. The treaty at Bathsheba. At that time, Amalek and Phicol, the commander of his forces, said to Abraham, God is with you in everything you do. Now swear to me here before God that you will not deal falsely with me or my children or my descendants. Show to me in the country where you are living as an alien the kindness I have shown to you. Abraham said, I swear it. Then Abraham complained to Amalek about a well of water that Amalek's servants had seized. But Amalek said, I don't know who have done this. You did not tell me and I heard it only today. So Abraham brought sheep and cattle and gave them to Amalek, and the two men made a treaty. Abraham set apart seven ewe lambs from the flock, and Amalek asked Abraham, what is the meaning of these seven ewe lambs? Is the meaning of, of these seven ewe lambs you have set apart by themselves? Okay, he replied, accept these seven lambs from my hand as witness. That I dug this well so that the place was called Bathsheba because the two men swore an oath there. 
after the treaty had been made at Beersheba, Amalek and Phicol, the commander of his forces, returned the land to the Philistines. Abraham planted a tamarisk, tamarisk tree in Beersheba, and there he called upon the names of the Lord, the return of God, and Abraham stayed in the land of the Philistines for a long time. Okay, we move to um, chapter 22, Abraham tested. It was with the sacrifice of Isaac. Okay, here I am, he replied. Then God said. Okay, some time later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the one, on one of the mountains I would tell you about. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and saddled his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place up in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, father. Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here. Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar and top on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Okay? Abraham looked up, and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said... On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashores. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Then Abraham returned to his servants and they set out together for Beersheba and Abraham stayed in Beersheba. Then the next one is talking about Norhars and his sons, the Norhars sons. Um, sometime later, Abraham was told Malachi is, a, is also a mother. Uh, and she has born sons to your brother, Nahar. So we're talking about Abraham and his brother's wife bearing children to continue their descendant, their lineages. Okay. That's all that other uh, part of 22, the latter part it was talking about, 22 verses 20. So we're going to move on into the death of Sarah, which is um, chapter 23. Sarah lived to be 127 years old. She died at Kirith Arba, that is in the region of Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham went to mourn for Sarah and to weep over her. Then Abraham rose from beside his dead wife and spoke to the Hittites. He said, I am an alien and a stranger among you. Sell me some property for a burial site. Here I, so I well, for a burial site here so I can bury my wife or my dead. The Hittites replied to Abraham, Sir, listen to us. You are a mighty prince among us. Bury your dead in the choices of our tombs. 
None of us will refuse you his tomb for burying your dead. And Abraham rose and bowed down before the people of the land. The Hittites, he said to them, if you are willing to let me bury my dead, then listen to me and intercede with Ephraim, son of Zohar, Zohar, on my behalf, so he will sell me the cave of Machpelah, which belongs to him and is at the end of his field. Ask him to sell it to me for the full price as a burial site among you. Ephron the Hittite was sitting among his people, and he replied to Abraham in the hearing of all the Hittites who had come to the gate of the city. No, my lord, he said, listen to me. I give you the field, I and I give you the cave that is in it. If I give it to you in the presence of my people, bury your dead. Again, Abraham bowed down before the people of the land, and he said to Ephron in their hearing, Listen to me, if you will, I pay the price of the field, accept it from me so I can bury my dead. Ephron answered Abraham, Listen to me, my lord. The land is worth 400 shekels of silver, but what is that between me and you? Bury your dead. Abraham agreed to Ephron's terms and weighed out for him the price he had named. In the hearing of the Hittites, 400 shekels of silver, according to the weight current among the merchants. So Ephron filed, or Ephron's field in Machpelah, near memory, both the field and the cave in it, and all the trees within borders of the field was deeded to Abraham as his property in the presence of all the Hittites who had come to the gate of the city. Afterwards, Abraham buried his wife Sarah in the cave in the field of Machpelah, near Mamre, which is at Hebron in the land of Canaan. So the field and the cave in it were deeded to Abraham by the Hittites as a burial site. Okay, and that's all we had to pretty much um, say for chapter 20 to 23, what we read, just to give you a little edification about Abraham and his son Isaac. Isaac is known. Uh, Isaac means the meaning of Isaac in the biblical sense is he laughs. Okay. Uh, the birthplace of Isaac by a miracle of God born to Abraham a hundred years old and Sarah was 90 years old or birth dad I should say not birthplace. Uh, his occupation was a livestock owner. He was best known for being a child God had promised to continue the covenant line, being used by God to test Abraham's faith, becoming the father of twins, Jacob and Esau. Okay, we're going to read about them as we go further along in uh, Genesis. I'm not sure. Uh, give you a little edification on Sarah, what her name meant biblically. It meant princess. Her birthplace was Ur. You are of the Shandonese, moved to Canaan. Occupation was the wife and mother of Abraham. Uh, well, I'm sorry, the wife of Abraham, but the mother of Isaac. Okay, best known for laughing at God's promise of a child, miraculously bearing a child at the age of 90. Her status at the, as the mother of the nations from which Jesus came. Okay. And let me see if I have something on Abraham. Okay, Abraham, uh, name means father of many. His birthplace was Ur of the Shannonians. Uh, moved to Canaan. His occupation, basically known as a wealthy livestock owner. Uh, best known for hearing the call of an unknown God, following in faith. Uh, becoming the father of the Jewish people. Hearing and accepting God's covenant. And that's basically uh, the three uh, characters or people we were discussing from chapter 20 to 23 in Genesis. Um, I tell you, that's a lot that even Isaac, and I'm just going back to the sacrifice of test um, that God was putting um, Abraham in. To see if he really was a follower, a disciple of his, and testing his obedience. That's basically what I really believe uh, the testing came about. Not that he was a good man and this, that, and the third. But 
if he was testing his obedience, would he be able to do the ungodly thing? Or, you know, we, we, we as a human race don't think about killing our children or anything of that nature. But when we're asked to, you know, present one of our children, our only child, such as it was in um, Sarah and Abraham's case, it was his only child that he had, uh, which was Isaac. And, you know, it, it meant a great deal to both him and Sarah, but his obedience to listening to the Lord um, and answering him through faith by not even flinching um, when he had put his child on the offering um, altar that he made for the sacrifice to the Lord, for what the Lord had told him to do. But it was like even Isaac didn't even flinch, you know. He didn't even um like ask the dad what was he doing, you know, why was he strapped down to these logs or whatnot. And, you know, what was he trying to, you know, do? <laughs> you know, he didn't know he was being sacrificed because he even asked, you know, um his dad as they were um walking toward the mountain that he had to be sacrificed on or around you know what, what was the uh offering we were going to be uh having had to offer up to the lord you know he didn't know he was gonna be it you know but it was just like wow um they both looked at real good in my eyes he he has been a trooper by not trying to cry or try to get away and and um shoot abraham just being faithful uh sight on scene um, just being obedient to what the Lord had told him to do and not even uh, second guessing it, you know, or questioning it. And that's true faith. Uh, hopefully that would be something we all uh, would master before we leave this world. It's just being totally obedient, obedient to the Lord and what he tells us to do and how to react to certain things. So that's a blessing uh, in itself for us to... Um, Oh, what do you call it? Uh, it's when I'm trying to think of when you're trying to emulate someone. That's what I'm saying. When you're trying to emulate or copy another person's demeanor, for lack of a better word. Um, we should all try to strive for doing our best and knowing that the Lord is pleased with our actions and our demeanors and however we are presenting ourselves in this world, our plane of life. That's all I had, guys. Uh, thank you for coming to the channel to read and um, discuss and just ask for discernment from the Lord when we're reading scriptures out the Bible for it to be the betterment of our livelihoods, okay? Um, but take care of yourselves and blessings to you all. Uh, thank you for viewing my video. Tell others about my uh, channel so they can come in and witness the goodness of the good news that is uh, there for us to partake of. Okay, y'all have a great one, and I'll talk to you soon for more Bible scripture reading. Thank you. Good night.